Trying to get people to there's remember. So much, Dennis, there is so much to be said every Saturday. It's just we got to spread it out. I hear that. Everybody yeah. just... Well, you've yeah. been out in the country, yeah. Dennis, and uh, what are the burning things in your mind now that you have reemerged into the threshold of... Uh, into Chicago here. What's uh, what is on your mind that you would like to share with us? Oh boy, that's a good question. I, you know, I don't want to start talking about my cases and all the problems I got. You know, please don't. Uh, we don't want to hear your problems, but, but buddy. I, I brought you something to uh, uh, ponder in your fervor for the elections. Oh. This is a quotation from somebody that we all know and love and revere. Go, babe. And his name is Tom Paine. Ah, yes. Oh, good. It's a little bit edited now. Uh-oh. Okay, uh -oh. but just a little, and I'll tell you after. The people, wearied and stunned with parties, have almost resigned the prerogative of thinking. Even curiosity has expired, and a universal languor has spread itself over the land. The opposition between the parties is visibly no other than a contest for power, whilst the mass of the nation stands torpidly by as the prize. Yes! Tom. Tom I gotta, Payne. I got to say that Dennis did uh, tell me he was coming to town. He verified the, this booking that we had, and he, uh, he wanted to know if he could be, uh, he didn't use this word, but critical of the president. And I said, certainly, right after the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, you know, I, didn't want, I, I have no choice, right? You know, how, how did Tom Payne uh, be able to picture the languor? I mean, the use of the words. The words uh, to, de a, to what describe got me. what we are, what we experience right now. Stands torpidly by. <laughs> the Those are beautiful words. Jeez. I mean, he was writing about England, you know, mm -hmm. and he was writing about England about 1790, 1792. Yeah. And he's looking back, so the tense has changed. It a sort of bit. collapses the 230 years yeah, in between, doesn't it? Exactly, because man, oh that's man. what happens, isn't it? That the parties are little groups of people hungry for power, yep. and the people, as a mass, have no access to any of that. I mean, or they have certain forms of access that are preset and inviolable. You can't get in except by established channels, you know. We got to take what we're offered and do the best with it, I think. One of the things that came to mind when Marilyn Katz was up here talking about uh, Obama not being really, of the, not of the left, and kind of being caught between uh, us criticizing him and uh, the right. Uh, what, what always occurred to me Early on, I said we're going to have to push him from the bottom up. Well, he said and that I too. Don't, well, he did. He, he asked us to do that, uh, but that is my instinct, anyhow. And it, it clearly didn't really happen. But it, so I'm always concerned about how do we energize, fire up the masses, the people, so that they do take uh, stronger stands. And uh, you know, we came out of the community organizing spirit, and we. Uh, <clears throat> You know, we kind of want to root for uh, Obama know, these days, but what can we do to, uh, to fire people up more and inspire them? Occupy. That's what I was just going to say. What do you call the yeah. Occupy movement? That's good. I'm you good. Know. I mean, wasn't I that what it, it was about? Isn't Clearly. It, wasn't it, it, Clearly. It, it was exactly that type of impulse to try to push from the bottom up or well, push Well, you're, from, you're out in San Francisco area a lot. Right. And what's, the, what's Occupy do there? I mean, how is it going? And Everybody then, saw what happened in Oakland, right? right. I mean, that right. that's, was like the epicenter in a lot of ways. And, and uh, you know, it was not simple. No. And it, huh. is, it isn't finished. It's only just started. It's, people are, I think, all over. The people had the experience. It seems to me the one unifying experience that people all over the country had from the Occupy movement was the fact of the incipient police state, you know, which came out and showed its face in city after city after city mm -hmm. and did not stint in its, uh, 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 you know, determination to squash that stuff. Yeah. And to stop it from taking root, you know, as in the form that they first started, they weren't going to tolerate it, and they didn't. And they certainly had the power and the will to jump right on it and do what was necessary to uh, get it off the, you know, off the plaza and off the paper, off the front page. And, and uh, they're still out there, the cops, you know what I mean? And the... And the um, 
the national network of the cops. Our mayor in Oakland was yeah. uh, the one who pulled the cover off that, talking about the conference call that they had when they were going to vamp. Right. You know, and uh, uh, it, it's that stuff is maintained, but regardless of <coughs> what party holds the White House or the Congress, uh, you know. I mean, Marilyn talked about uh, uh, the thing about Israel, the, 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 the ruling class ruling has unity class. about Israel. We saw that when Netanyahu came and the Congress stood on its feet 30 times to cheer for what he said, one it's incredible. phrase after the other. It's incredible. And all of them. That's, that's the unity that we're, is up against us. And they got the cops to enforce it. Well, they got know. the cops, they got the money, they got the They got the army and the war and the 10,000 you know, nukes. So the occupiers, the occupiers um, were a wonderful uh, moment of uh, claiming what really should be ours. The commons, the, the front page, etc. But the media fell, again, as, as it continually does, fell way short of covering the story instead immediately started saying, what's your message, who's your leaders, you know, get to, you know, doing all that. And I'm also concerned that the young people and all the people who took part in that um, have uh, no feeling, no belief that they can actually um, do what we were talking about earlier, which is uh, make a difference in the campaign. You know, a lot of people say, I would never do that. And I'm like, well, it is, it is your system. It is ours to do something with, and um, I'm I'm more concerned. I, I don't know. I'm equally concerned about the president being elected and the Congress not returning some of these Tea Partier people. Um, well, and that requires folks on the ground. Okay. Michael let Dennis Smith. talk. Okay. Let Dennis. No, talk. no. I, I, you, know, <laughs> you can go on. This is a propaganda forum. This is the media. <laughs> this is where uh, stuff gets said that people want said. You know. I mean, you say the media, the 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 mainstream media, or some or kind, the you know, the capitalist media, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. They that they're not the the press. Right, right, They're a right. propaganda device or a propaganda agency for the present system of rulership, you know, and that's a very, yeah. as Fred Hampton said, I can't say what he fully said, but he said, it's a class struggle, you MF. know, when it was supposed to be all about race. Well, yeah. Speaking of Fred Hampton, uh, in the promo or propaganda that we put out for the show, we did say that you were a renowned civil rights lawyer who had done the Fred Hampton case, the Attic case, and the Judy Bari case. We only have a couple minutes. What are you working on these days, Dennis? What am I working on? I, I've, been, uh, um, I've been helping Cindy Sheehan a little bit. She has a tax problem. She uh, hasn't been paying taxes since her son was, his life was thrown away, as she puts it. Mm. Um, but that's not much to it. I mean, that I'm involved in some of the Occupy stuff. And in, uh, uh, the, I guess the biggest case I'm working on now is uh, against the gang injunction in Oakland, which is, speaking of the police state, uh, uh, you know, it, it actually has been eclipsed by the Occupy stuff that happened and all the attacks on the marches that, that uh -huh. uh, were done there. But I, I, if, if I had to pick a thing that's like I'm part of, and it, please note that in those cases you mentioned, I was just one of the One people, of many, one of, of course. People that, that, uh, and now we kind of, there, I'm one of the people that's really trying to finally, after what it is, 40 some years since Bobby and Huey took to the streets of Oakland because of the cops, they're still the Oakland cops, yeah. and we're still trying to do something. They were always that. a pretty rough police force, pretty primitive. You in know, a lot of ways. I mean, it, it, unless you come from Chicago, you, you'd be stunned by what happens. Yeah. There. <laughs> we got to um, thank some people, but would you stick around for a few minutes um, yes. and we'll put it on uh, YouTube?
My pleasure. Cool. Okay, so we want to do uh, some thanking of the people who make this show possible. Uh, I want to thank Paul and Mary Wozniak here, the videographers, and they do so much else. Angel Herrera, who didn't quite beat Mary here this morning, but tr that's because of the CTA. <laughs> we want to thank Eli Sloan, who was taking a nice rest. Lisa Smith, too. Laura Herman, Daniel Kugler, and our on-site engineer, Jake Sorati downtown. Jake, if, thanks a lot. And if you want to get a hold of either uh, of any of us at Live from the Heartland, you can try it first at Michael at HeartlandCafe.com and Katie at HeartlandCafe.com. We encourage you to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do. All power to we the people. We say all power to the people. And uh, we're going to get a little music and we got another 15 seconds. So tune in next week. Next week we have uh, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers are going to show up. Chuy Negrete. Michael Peshkin of the Student Vote Project, Jamie O'Reilly on Catholics in Chicago, and who knows who else we'll bring up, because we'll have an action-packed show. Over and out from all of us at Live from the Heartland. Talk on the mic, Mike. You want? Tell me what you want, Michael James. I don't know what I want. I thought you were the one who said this. I had thing. this idea, but I think we have just as much fun sitting around. Talking okay, let's to let's just sit down and have breakfast. Yeah. Yay! Thanks, you guys. Anthony, are you still here? Hello, we're trying to do this. We're, uh, we got some interesting people here today. We had a good time. I wish we had two hours. Yeah, I'm gonna keep trying. Oh, baby. Ooh, diddy wop. We're back with the jock. Back on the scene with the record machine. Correct time now is 10:17. Ooh, biddy, 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 blah, 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 bl